it's time for chapter 12. Things get weirder. I didn't think it was all that weird when Stacy Bonet called me Saturday morning to see how I was doing. After all, she's my friend, and she did think I had fainted in school the day before. I didn't realize when I laughed and told her that there wasn't anything wrong with me that I was only confirming her worst fears. I didn't figure that out until Monday morning when our class turned in something from the turned into something from the twilight zone. Until that point I had done things I had other things to worry about, like what to do about Miss Schwartz. Since my mother still wouldn't let me out of the house, I spent a long time discussing this force field thing with Peter over the phone. He told me he was pretty sure Miss Schwartz was actually safer inside that thing than she would be walking the streets. She probably doesn't like it in there, he said. I know I wouldn't, but nothing's going to hurt her. Well, doesn't she have to eat or go to the bathroom or something? I asked nervously. I could almost see Peter shrug over the telephone line. I don't think so, he said. I have a feeling time is pretty much holding still inside that thing. So unless she had to go to the bathroom when he put her in there, she's probably fine. He paused and then added, Come to think of it, that force field could be a woman's dream. She won't age a bit. Don't be a male chauvinist piglet, I said angrily. This is serious. I know it's serious, snapped Peter, but we can't do anything about it this weekend unless you know of a time that we can be sure that Brock's home won't be there. I suppose you're right, I said, but the thought of Miss Schwartz trapped in that force field gnawed away at me all the rest of the day and all of Sunday too. I had to get her out of there. I was still stewing about that on Monday until things got so weird that I forgot about Miss Schwartz for a while. It started with Duncan Dougal, who walked into class carrying the biggest apple I had ever seen in my life. Good morning, Mr. Smith, he said. How are you today? His voice was so syrupy sweet it made me want to throw up. I looked away and then looked back again so so fast, it put a crick in my neck. Duncan, I thought in astonishment. The class bully put his apple on Mr. Smith's desk, then went to his own desk, sat down, and folded his hands neatly in front of him. I squeezed my eyes shut and then opened them again to see if anything would change. But the apple was still there, and Duncan was still sitting at his desk, smiling like a little angel. What's going on here? When I opened my desk, I found a note that said, I think you are the bravest person I have ever met. It was signed, a friend. Who had it come from and why? I looked around the room, but the others were all bent over their desk, working busily away. I turned back to my work, trying to figure out what was going on. But even the weird stuff that had happened so far hadn't prepared me for what came next. You're a pig-faced baboon, yelled a familiar voice. Stacy? Stacy Bonet? The girl most likely to be declared a saint while still living? I turned and saw Stacy standing, standing beside her desk, shouting at Mike Foran, the only kid I had ever heard of who had never, and I mean never, gotten in trouble with a teacher. Shut up, yelled Mike. Shut up, you creep. When Stacy slapped him across the face, I almost fell out of my chair. Of course, Stacy couldn't slap that well, having never done it before. So it was kind of a wimpy little slap, but this was Stacy Benet, for heaven's sakes. Stacy yelled Mr. Smith, who was sitting at the back of the room with a reading group. Michael, what's going on up there? He started for the front of the room, but he was too late. When Stacy slapped Mike, he jumped up so fast he knocked his desk over. His face was red. I didn't realize until later it was from stage fright. Your mother wears a... Uh, uh, your mother wears... 
I wanted to prompt him. It was pathetic to see the nicest kid in class try to come up with a withering insult. And even more pathetic when he finally finished up with, Your mother wears polyester. But it seemed to do the trick. Stacy began to shriek in outrage. Mr. Smith reached them just in time to keep them from going for each other's throats. The rest of you stay in your seats, he ordered. I'll be back in a minute. Then he walked out the door, dragging the two best-behaved kids in the sixth grade along with him. They were kicking and screaming every step of the way. I closed my eyes and shook my head. I was sure I was awake. So what was going on? Was this the same planet I had gone to sleep on? I couldn't wait for recess so I could talk to Peter.